Welcome to the Intuitive Eating and Body Positivity Podcast. I'm Terry and I'll be talking about all things intuitive eating, body positivity and health at every size, and shaking off weight stigma, diet culture and food rules so that we can all have a better relationship with food and our bodies. Do you know what I really love? I love how just as winter is kicking in, just as the weather is turning and it's really, really wet, the tumble dryer packs up. Oh, God. I'm really hoping I don't have to replace it because that ain't cheap, is it? But yeah, my tumble dryer is broken. It's just stopped. It goes for about two minutes and then it just stops, just decides not to keep going. So the husband is going to have a look because I am that wife that says, can you fix this for me, please? (laughs) So yeah, he's going to have a look. Hopefully it's not broken forever. Otherwise, I'm going to be having lots of wet washing hanging around my house. And that is no fun, is it? I don't really want to go and spend the money on a new tumble dryer. Anyway, enough about that. Sad news today. Sad news today. Matthew Perry has died. You know, Chandler out of Friends. You know how much I love Friends, right? So, oh, how sad is that? So, so sad. That was really sad news to wake up to this morning. I'm so gutted. Oh, and then all the memes have been going around on Facebook and Instagram and stuff. And mm, It's just sad. It's just sad. Friends was a big part of my life for a long time. So, yeah. It's a character that I love dearly. Bless him. Bless him. I don't know why I started the episode with that, because it's not a very cheerful start to the day, is it? I've told you about my tumble dry breaking and somebody dying, so I am sorry. If you came here to be cheered up, I've not managed to do that yet, have I? (laughs) Soz. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. I had a question, and... I had a, it came in the form of a message on Instagram and it said, Terry, you keep talking about the binge restrict pendulum on your podcast, but what is it, please? Great question. Allow me to answer that for you, my friend. If you're a member of the Eat From Within membership, you will know about the binge restrict pendulum because I talk about it a lot and there's a whole module in there about it. But I appreciate that if you are not in the membership, you may not understand what it is. So I'm going to explain it. Basically, the pendulum is a way to understand how your body responds to hunger and fullness, to restriction and to binge in. And it's a visual tool. It's a mental visual tool. And I say mental visual because I can see this in my head. If I'm explaining it, if I'm thinking about it, if I'm talking about it, I can see this pendulum in my head. There is a picture of this pendulum. I am putting it on Instagram. When this goes live, when this episode goes live, there will be the the cover art for the episode, if that makes sense, the one that says what the episode's about. And then also on that post, there will be a picture of the pendulum. But what you can also do is go to the blog post that accompanies this. So if you go to my website and go onto the blog post for it, there's a picture on there as well. So you can definitely see it. But this is a, whether you look at it visually in front of you on a screen or whether you have it in your head, it's it's a picture, right? You can imagine this thing, whether it's a picture or an actual swinging clock pendulum, for example, you need to be able to see this pendulum. Basically, if you imagine a pendulum swinging left to right, right? Imagine the clock pendulum, for example. As it ticks, it just swings backwards and forwards, gently backwards and forwards in time, in a nice little routine, regular as clockwork, regular as clockwork, you know what I mean? Regularly swinging side to side, right? This is how we have to see our hunger and fullness, this pendulum swinging left to right. On one side, on the left, is restriction. And on the other side, on the right, is binging. 
This is why it's called the binge restrict pendulum. You might also see this as, on the left, control, serious control around food. And then on the right, loss of control of food, lack of control around food and eating. In the middle is intuitive eating. So at the bottom of this pendulum, if the pendulum was just hanging still, at the bottom would be intuitive eating, comfort, no stress around food, no restriction, no binging. And this is where we're aiming to be. This is where we want to be all the time, right? So let's talk about the restriction side, the left-hand side of this pendulum. When we diet, we are pulling that pendulum over to the left. We are restricting. Do you know what else I can see this as? I can see it as a bit like Newton's cradle. You know that thing that, that some people have on their desks and it's just a desk toy, basically, and it's a line of silver balls. And if you pull the one ball up to the side and you let it go, it comes clacking through and the one the other end shoots up the other side. That's also how you can visualise this, if that helps. Anyway, on the left is restriction. So when we diet, we are pulling that pendulum over to the left because we're restricting. This restriction could be diet plans, calorie counting, being good, not allowing certain foods in your diet. It could also be only eating healthy foods. Um, it could be calling food good and bad. These are all types of restriction in eating. Then at the opposite side of this pendulum, you have got binging. This is the lack of control that you sometimes feel around food. And it looks like what we think of as overeating to varying degrees. Maybe it's eating extra servings of food or maybe it's uncontrolled eating, like the big cupboard raids, you know, the big binges. And it could also be the scheduled treat days. So if you are having a diet where you schedule in treat days or cheat days, that's also uh, a binge response to the restriction. And they affect each other. So the, ref the restriction affects the binge side of the pendulum and the binge affects the restriction side of the pendulum. And to what degree that is varies according to how extreme your actions are. So here's where you need this picture of the pendulum in your head, right? When you restrict a little bit, the pendulum pulls over to the left a little bit, just gently over to the left. Over time, your body and your brain realizes there's restriction and it forces the pendulum to swing through to the other side. And just for simplicity, let's say it's an equal amount. So it, you are restricting a little bit and then it makes you eat a little bit. So you pull the pendulum to the left where you're restricting a little bit and then it swings through an equal amount to the other side, to the binge side, and makes you eat a little bit. Maybe that's a little bit more than you would usually eat because you've restricted a little more than you usually would. An example of this would be hunger. So if you allow yourself to get too hungry, you find yourself eating more, right? You find yourself eating differently, maybe more than you usually would, eating with less control as well. You know, if you get hungry, a little more hungry than you like to be, all of a sudden you're looking for food, aren't you? Where is the food? Where is the food? Where is the nice food? What can I eat? What can I eat while I'm cooking? You know, that sort of thing. So if you allow yourself to get a little bit too hungry, you get this response. And that's that pendulum swinging through and coming up the other side to make you eat. Basically, it's your body saying, hang on, you're missing something. You're not giving yourself something. You need to eat it and making you do that. Now imagine that that restriction is way more extreme than that. Imagine you are cutting out whole food groups. So keto, for example, where you're taking out all the carbs or those shakes diets, shall we say, where you're removing actual food. 
now your body and your brain is going, all right, there's whole chunks of stuff missing here. And it's going to give you a more extreme response. So now you're raiding the cupboards, you're binge eating, you're eating a lot of food, food that you've been restricting so hard. If, if you think about it, every time you restrict, what is it that you crave? When you go the other side of that pendulum, when you've swung back through, what is it that you're craving? It's usually the foods that you've been cutting out, right? So imagine this pendulum again, and you pull that pendulum all the way up to the left, all the way up to, say, nine o'clock on a clock face, because you've restricted so hard. And then you let it go. Where is that pendulum arm swinging? It's coming crashing through the bottom and right up the other side to say the three o'clock line. Your pendulum is forcing you to respond in the same amount that you have been restricting. Does that make sense? That's not the end of it though, because what goes up must come down, right? So in similar measures, it's going to come back swinging the other way. So you've restricted really hard. You've taken out all of this food. You've massively calorie cut, for example, and you've been living on very, very few calories, not enough for your body. You have cut out massive food groups, like you've taken out all the carbs. Your body and your brain is saying, nope, enough of this. You have to feed yourself. Swings that pendulum through and up the other side. So you're having this big binge response. You're eating all this food. You've got no control around food. Then what's going to happen is in similar measures, it's got to come back the other way because what goes up must come down. So by the laws of gravity, if you're pulling a pendulum up to the side, when you let go, it's not going to stay there, is it? So just because it's through, swung through one way doesn't mean that's the end of it. Now it's got to come back again. And so where's it going? It's going back into restriction. And why is that? It's because now you're telling yourself that you've done something wrong and something you need to make up for, something you feel guilty about. And what is the response to that? You've got the pendulum. It's up at the binge response. It comes swinging back through and up the other side into restriction. So now what you're doing is dieting again. Does this sound about right for you? You know, you cut calories, you cut foods out, you tell yourself you can't have things. And then you have this response where you go a little bit mad and you eat all the food and you eat lots of the stuff that you've told yourself you can't have. Then you feel guilty and you put yourself back on a diet, you restrict harder than you did before, you exercise more, that sort of thing. Do you see how this works? Can you see in your mind that pendulum swinging backwards and forwards really hard? And it's not a nice place to be, is it? It's not a comfortable place to be living. What do we want instead? Well, what we want is that nice little gentle swing at the bottom. We want it to just swing gently backwards and forwards. It's never going to sit still because there's always fluctuation in our eating, isn't there? There's always fluctuation in our hunger and our fullness. But we want that pendulum to swing really gently left, get a little bit hungry, and then it swings gently to the right to get you to eat something. So you eat comfortably in response to that. And it might swing a little bit more left on occasions. So... Say you've had a long time between meals, for example, with no access to food. Then you get this response, creates a stronger response because you're a bit too hungry now. So maybe you eat a bigger meal. Maybe you have some snacks while you're making your meal, that sort of thing. But that's okay because that gentle, res that gentle swing and that gentle response is what we're looking for. It's the huge swings back and forth that we're trying to get rid of. Does that make sense? So how do you achieve that? Well, you get it by listening to your body. 
You get it by honouring your honouring. <laughs> There's the word for today. There's one in every episode, isn't there? There is one word that I cannot pronounce in every single episode. Well, today it is honouring. <laughs> no, what I meant to say was honouring. <laughs> you honour your body. You honour your hunger. When you're hungry, you eat. Because this pendulum applies very, very much to hunger and fullness too. It's not just restricting and binging. If you are just gently hungry, you'll gently eat in response. If you let yourself get to the point of absolutely starving, ready to rip somebody's head off hungry, you'll pull that pendulum right over to the left. What's going to happen? You're going to want to eat and you're going to eat and eat and eat. And then all of a sudden you've eaten so much that you are really full and really uncomfortable. So we want to honour the hunger. We just want to eat when we're hungry and then we'll eat an amount that is comfortable for us. You want to honour your hunger and honour your fullness. Respecting your body's comfort levels when you're eating. You need to satisfy yourself. Allow yourself the food that you want and the food that makes you feel good. It's not all about hunger and fullness. The pendulum applies to that too. So if you are eating none of the foods that you really like, then you are very much in the territory of clean eating, for example. Eating only foods that you think to be healthy. Then the response to that is quite often going to be when you do get your hands on the food that you've been restricting, um, the typically unhealthy foods, the food that you've been telling yourself you're not allowed, then you're going to eat more of it. So allow yourself to be satisfied by food. Allow yourself the good food that you enjoy, the good food that's good for your body, but also the good food that's good for your soul, for your mental well-being, all of that sort of thing. Allow yourself all foods. Nothing is out of bounds because... The second you start to say that food isn't allowed, you've put yourself into the restriction side. So allow yourself unconditional permission to all this food. You don't restrict food types. Don't restrict groups of foods or amounts of foods. You know, calorie counting is a surefire way to trigger that response because it's okay for a little while and then all of a sudden your body goes, hang on a minute, there's not enough fuel here. I can't survive on this long term. And it pushes that pendulum back through into binging. And even if it's not as extreme as a binge response, it pushes you to eat more food to try and get that energy, to get that fuel, to help your body to be the best it can be. And if you can do all of these things, there is no need for your body to have the extreme responses. If you can just sit there gently swinging backwards and forwards, hungry, comfortably full, hungry, comfortably full. Or if you can, you know, nicely balance your intake of foods, which intuitive eating will do for you. You know, a nice degree of the foods that's going to nourish you and a nice degree of the foods that is just there for fun, just there for fun and enjoyment then your body is just going to sit and you're just going to comfortably swing at the bottom of that pendulum arc. You're just going to have this lovely, comfortable response to eating. So, hopefully, hopefully that explains it. Hopefully you can see it in your mind. If you can't remember what I said at the beginning, there is a blog post with the picture on. It'll be on social media with this you know, the, the announcement for this podcast episode. There's a few places you'll find it, but go and have a look at it because it really does help put it, put it into your mind. Put it into your mind. Cement it. That's what I mean. Goodness me, it's late in the day. <laughs> it's late in the day. I shouldn't record these things so late when I'm very tired, should I? <laughs> My speech goes out the window somewhat. But hopefully that clears it up. Hopefully that answers your question. Thanks for the question. I really love it when I get questions. So 
I might start doing some listener question episodes. Maybe we'll just dedicate some episodes to answering your questions. So if that is the case, let's get some questions in. You can put them in the Facebook group for me. You can, oh, you know how I bang on about speak pipe? You know how I keep saying how you can send me a message? You can do it that way too. If you go to the webpage for the podcast on my website, on there, you will see there is a button. It says, have you got questions? And you can just hit the button and record me a voice note. And I will answer it for you. I'm happy to do that. I'm here to answer your questions. I'm genuinely here to help you understand intuitive eating, understand how it works in your body, understand how your body works so that you can make choices for yourself. So if you've got questions, please, please just ask them. I'm really, really happy to answer them for you. Right. I'm off to go hang some wet washing up. Great. (laughs) Great. Yeah. Have a lovely week. I really hope it's a good one. I mean, I'm recording some really, really good guest episodes this week. So those will be coming out over the next couple of months. Yeah, good things are coming, guys. Good things are coming. Take care of yourself. Have a really lovely, lovely week. Remember how awesome you are, because you are. You are awesome. And I will speak to you really soon. Ta-da.